Now I know that a lot of the people in my audience are Shadowrun fans, and most of them probably know that in Shadowrun, Nairobi is the international capital of spaceflight. And interestingly enough, it is for the precise reason why some of the cities in that specific corner of the world might see a huge uptick in prosperity in the near to middling future. But first, let's talk about launching things into space. It is commonly agreed upon among rocket scientists that the European Space Agency has the very best launch site of any major space agency. It's better than Cape Canaveral and certainly better than Baikonur. This is because the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana is only about 600 kilometers from the equator, and when it comes to launching rockets, that's a big boost. The thing you're looking to achieve if you want to launch anything out of a planet's gravity well is escape velocity. And for Earth, that's about 40,000 kilometers per hour. Now, the Earth spins at 1,670 kilometers per hour, which, compared to 40,000, isn't necessarily much. But ask any rocket scientist and they will tell you it's also not nothing. That's just free speed. This means you can get away with less fuel, which means less weight, which means less energy needed to get to escape velocity. Thing is, the farther away from the equator you launch, the less free speed you get. So that's why Guiana is so optimally placed. However, there is a place that is even better. Mount Kilimanjaro is 200 kilometers closer to the equator than the Guiana Space Center, and also almost 6,000 meters from sea level. This not only means that the bonus to initial launch velocity is a little bit higher, but it also decreases the distance that needs to be traveled in order to get to the zone where you are no longer inside Earth's gravity well. Also, the air is thinner, which reduces drag, which reduces fuel costs, which reduces weight. But the best thing about Kilimanjaro is that it's got a flat top. It's not some jagged peak where it's almost impossible to build. So, bug. You just want to launch rockets from on top of Kilimanjaro. Well, not quite, no. You see, right now, the most important factor in getting space industry started, which would give humanity access to unprecedented amounts of material wealth and technological opportunities, is reducing launch costs. And if you want an overview of why it is one of the best ideas for humanity right now to go into space, check out Isaac Arthur's video on bootstrapping the space industry in the description down below. This is why space agencies around the world have worked tirelessly to make launching kilograms of mass into space cheaper. And we have made some great strides in that department over the past few decades. Some work on developing lighter fuels and materials, others like SpaceX try to make rockets that are reusable, which the rocket is the most expensive part of the whole thing. It's the very vehicle that shoots you up there. And right now we use them once for every launch. That you, you buy a new car and you drive it once and then you throw it away. That's, that's how that works. But there are some concepts that suggest not using rockets at all. Enter the mass driver, which has been a very popular concept in science fiction for quite some time now, mostly in the form of big fuck-off railguns. But you could also use these to launch spaceships. In essence, they function the same way as maglevs, which are frictionless trains that are some of the fastest on the planet. They're so fast that they could be developed to easily break the sound barrier, but they don't do that because they transport passengers through areas where people live. There are g-forces to consider in acceleration, especially when you have old grandma sitting there trying to visit their grandson in some other city that's 400 kilometers away. And sometimes it's just not worth going the speed of sound for a relatively short distance. Vacuum or near vacuum tube maglev systems have been proposed, such as the Hyperloop, and those are generally the kinds of things that people envision when we talk about a mass driver used to launch spaceships. Basically, we would build one of those tubes along the slope of Kilimanjaro, which is pretty damn long, and then at the bottom, shoot these things up, accelerate them on the magnetic rail, and then fire them out the top. We shouldn't maybe necessarily dig too deep, on account of Kilimanjaro being a dormant volcano, but that might be opportunity more than it is problem. We could potentially tap that for geothermal energy, so the energy required to launch all those huge spaceships into space 
would come from the mountain itself. You could achieve such enormous speeds with a system like this that you might not need rockets at all anymore inside of that tube, but just powerful thrusters on like a space plane, such as the space shuttle, which could in theory land at any large airport. Put it up with a skyhook system and possibly we wouldn't need even those thrusters anymore except for navigation in space. But that's a story for another day. This could bring launch costs down by an unprecedented margin instantly. So fast that from one day to the next, a person that has $20,000 to spare could hop on a passenger plane and fly to space. For reference, currently 20,000 will give you about a kilo to launch into space. And as soon as that thing gets running and economies of scale kicks in to all the ancillary industries around it, those launches might get a whole lot cheaper. But how does this bring economic prosperity to East Africa? Well, historically, Africa as a whole has been sort of fucked by geography. Most parts of the continent were just dealt a really bad starting hand. The climate is terrible for reliable agriculture in most places. There's a whole lot of wildlife that wants to kill you. Mountains and jungles make it incredibly difficult to get around. You either drown, or you have no water at all. Add to this the history of slavery and colonial exploitation, the continued exploitation of people and natural resources by Western and Chinese megacorporations, the never-ending racial tensions and tribal conflicts. Combine all of those factors and more, which are also true about Africa, you have a place where there is no proper infrastructure, you have a place where there's no, no proper economy, you have a place where there's no proper education as a result of those things, you have a place where oppressive regimes are omnipresent, and you have a place that every educated person that comes from there leaves for the Western world in order to make the big bucks. No, seriously, rich Africans coming to like Europe and America in order to be like doctors and engineers and all that stuff is a problem for African economies. Oh, and of course, also the constant donations of material goods by Westerners who feel guilty about what their ancestors did to the continent and thus the local manufacturers that are trying to start a business selling clothes literally have to compete with free stuff and immediately go out of business. For the first time ever though, Africa's geography, at least the geography of that specific corner of Africa, because Africa's like huge, for the first time ever it might become an invaluable resource that isn't just used for tourism. The space industry is projected to become the largest industry in all human history ever. If it takes off, which the only reason that could make that not be the case is we all die before that because of climate change, suddenly Kilimanjaro becomes the gatekeeper of that whole industry. And while a whole lot of towns and cities in the region will benefit massively from this, I think the biggest winners will be Nairobi and Mombasa. They would become some of the most powerful trade cities in human history. And if there's one thing that's always true about trade cities, is that they just grow obscenely rich. Now yes, both Nairobi and Mombasa are in Kenya, whereas Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania. But both of them are closer to the mountain than Tanzania's own capital, Dodoma. Mombasa is already one of the most important ports of trade on the entire continent. And if you're already building a 30 kilometer maglev launch tube on Kilimanjaro, you might as well just build some high-speed rail to transport cargo and spaceships there in the first place. Nairobi is even closer to Kilimanjaro and it's already a huge city and economic powerhouse of the region. They will soak up huge amounts of that industry. International businesses will open offices there in droves. Both of these cities will become pivotal for some of the most lucrative ventures in human history. And they will also become holy sites, meccas, for educated people from all around the world. And this isn't just money from the space shipping and handling industry. I mean, where would you want to build those spaceships if not just locally? All the materials would have to be shipped there anyway. Spaceflight has been on the bleeding edge of all kinds of engineering for decades, if not almost a century now. 
so any other kind of engineering field that wanted to benefit from the expertise available and the materials available and the infrastructure available to the space industry would also want to settle in Nairobi and Mombasa. Frankly, at that point, why not just also educate all of the people in the space industry on site? Make the University of Nairobi into one of the most prestigious business and engineering schools in the world because all the experts on those topics live in the area anyway. Homes will be built, infrastructure projects financed, public transportation networks established. If you already have high-speed rail for cargo between cities and Kilimanjaro, you might as well also just put passenger trains on there. It's only economical to do so. Access to infrastructure and affordable transportation is one of the primary indicators of wealth and prosperity all over the world. This goes so far as to making it so streets on which there is a bus stop in especially poor areas and cities tending to have more slightly wealthier people living in them. This means wealth and opportunity spreading out over that entire quite enormous area. Now, of course, many rich people from all over the world would suddenly be moving there, mostly scientists and engineers and astronauts, because let's be honest, even the whole of Africa doesn't have a lot of those. They just have other priorities at this point in time, and again, many of them just move to Europe or America. But with the wealth and educational improvements flooding into the region, East Africans could very well become the dominant people in spaceflight for quite some time. And not just space flight, but suborbital flight also. You could get on a passenger plane that is launched through the tube and does not in fact go to space, but to other places on Earth. It would be able to land at pretty much any major commercial airport, and also it, you could just go from Kilimanjaro to any place in the world in a few hours. Yes, of course, all the foreigners would bring their own cultures and cuisines, but scientists are quite adventurous. And let me tell you from personal experience, the regional cuisines there? Ooh, bloody delicious. Kenyan and Tanzanian foods could be inextricably linked with spaceflight for centuries to come. They would see a meteoric rise in popularity all over the world because all eyes of the world will be on the big fuck-off railgun that is on Kilimanjaro. But okay, now that we're super excited, let's slow down for a moment. I've been painting a very rosy picture this whole time and to be honest with how the world is going in terms of economics and morality it's not at all impossible that this would be the thing that happens but there are some things to consider first of all kilimanjaro is if not a holy site at least a site of mythological significance for a lot of people groups in the area now of course it would become the most important mountain in human history but it does come with the sour aftertaste of desecrating the holy sites of people whose traditions have not really been respected, shall we say, historically? But then if they found oil underneath Stonehenge, they would most definitely tap that shit. Economic interests have tended to overrule spiritual ones historically. One of the things that I personally find much more concerning is wildlife. There is a lot of wildlife around Kilimanjaro, and a lot of it is really, really a bit too close to dying out for comfort. You know that stereotypical image you have of African wildlife with the, with the giraffes and the elephants and the verdant steppes? That's around Kilimanjaro. Urbanization of that immediate area wouldn't necessarily increase very much for the precise reason why all the wildlife would probably get fucked. Launching spaceships makes a lot of noise. If this gets started well and proper and becomes a good machine, I am talking sonic booms every 15 minutes or so. Possibly even at night. Some of these animals have extremely sensitive hearing. Sonic booms are extremely fucking loud. You see the problem here. But then there is also the question of how much economic prosperity that would actually bring to the region. While this development is usually how it goes, there's a certain history of exploitation of Africa by international interests that is still well alive today. If you get a bunch of ultra-rich people living and vacationing in an area that is super poor, some of the people working to service those ultra-rich people might see some benefits, 
But you only need to look at the fact that luxury resorts and complete shithole areas exist in very close proximity to each other in places like Haiti to know that this does not always play out too well for the locals. It really isn't a stretch to suggest that the whole thing would just gentrify the area and exacerbate problems of wealth inequality even further. Corruption creates that kind of environment. And Africa is very good at corruption. What you need is a strong, middle-class local economy that can integrate with the growing space industry so really everyone can reap the benefits. Otherwise, these Africans will just have to deal with all the problems of having the biggest gun ever built in their backyard and the usual suspects will pocket all the money. This is increasingly problematic if one considers the robotization of the workforce. You would think that an industry that is on the bleeding edge of robotics at all times probably is going to have a lot of robots making their stuff and not humans. Then again, robots in combination with spaceflight might make even the poorest areas of the world richer than the richest ones now because there's just so much pie to go around, we have to put it somewhere. And also, of course, there's the problem with maybe the Kilimanjaro mass driver situation is not feasible for some economic or engineering reason, after all, that we just don't know about yet. That's entirely possible. In any event, spaceflight and the space industry will bring massive wealth to the Earth, and probably we will see a lot of unexpected winners and losers in this particular industrial revolution. Just hope we get around to putting up that sunshade in space so we cannot overheat from climate change. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe to this video. Share it in your relevant communities that you are a part of. Do not spam it. Consider supporting me on Patreon and following my Twitter account. And in that spirit, look into the space industry. Maybe, you know, yeah, get, watch some Isaac Arthur videos so you can get into the, the proper spirit of futurism and space and the future and futurism and space in futurism and futurism in space and see you around cunts.